Hi, and welcome to this month's edition of SIGS ON, where it's all academic all the time. Um, this video is extremely important for parents and students to watch as we will be talking about how your child will be picking up all their material from our school in a safe and appropriate manner. So please be patient with us. You know, we have a very well thought out plan to make this work for everybody involved. And most importantly, which is the most paramount, is making sure everybody's safe. So please take the time and sit and watch this as a family and uh, we will provide you all the information you, you need. So that being said, let me introduce the one and only, the principal of the eighth grade center, Dr. Siggins. How you doing, Dr. Siggins? I'm doing great, Mr. Farcia. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. So, you know, it, it's, it's been an adventure these last couple of weeks, you know, with the online learning and a, a lot of kids are doing well. Um, as a teacher, I've learned a lot. There's a lot of things I've learned to move to take for future years. And, um, uh, we made the best out of it. Um, we do miss the kids a lot. We, it's, you know, we do wish we were in school with them, but uh, I, I think we've done a really nice job of making the best out of a tough situation. And uh, this video is gonna outline a lot of important stuff to close out the year. I agree, and, and you are correct. Uh, I think all of us, and I'm, I'm not just speaking for you or me or whoever, but everybody I've spoken to has really missed having the opportunity to work with students. Uh, and it's been a little disheartening. Yeah. Um, but what I would suggest is is this, you know, we, we have a couple of things that we want to talk to you about. Most notably, I'd like to make sure parents are aware of this as well. June 3rd is the last day, if you will, that students will be receiving grades for that fourth marking period. And so uh, the time from June 3rd to the end of the school year, June 10th for them, uh, we'll be running what we call our enrichment activities that will be not graded, okay? The last day students can, will be able to submit graded material will be June 3rd. So please, I'm, I'm just asking all of our parents right now, check Skyward, have your kids check Skyward with you to make sure that if there's anything at this particular point in time that's missing, that all you need to do is give your teacher, contact your teacher and, and engage them in a conversation about what they could do and so forth move, moving forward. Because what I don't wanna have happen is June 10th and June 11th roll around and then people look at their grades and say, what happened? Many of our students are doing an excellent job. We do have some kids that you know are shutting it down right now and, and that's, that's gonna be unfortunate, okay? So please, please make sure you check Skyward. You have a total, they have a total of 12 days left five days this week, four the next week, and three after that. So everything needs to get finalized at that point, okay? Please encourage them just to finish up the year on a, it's been a, it's, just, it's not been a lot of fun. It's been difficult for everybody. You, parents, me, you, I mean, we, we gotta try to work. We got our own yeah. kids. It's not easy, okay? We understand yeah. that. And our parents have been awesome, awesome uh, support. I know it's frustrating at times, but our parents have been really good and we really appreciate that, okay? As we are wrapping up the school year though, uh, we do wanna make sure that uh, you know all the building principals along with the central office staff is working together on coming up with a series of individualized building plans to allow access to the building to clean out lockers, get belongings, return materials and so forth, okay? So what I would like to start off with Mr. Parsi is this, just a couple of key ideas ideas uh, as we go ahead and put this out. On Monday, tomorrow, uh, you'll be receiving an email with me with a letter, actually two letters. Uh, one is going to describe what that plan looks like and includes an actual schedule. Okay, so everybody's getting that information all at one time. In order for us to do what you said, do it safely and do it yeah. in an orderly fashion so we can limit the number of kids and people in the building at one time, we had to put together a schedule. Okay. Now, when we put together a schedule, I understand what's going to happen. There's going to be potentially conflicts, especially if you have kids in different places. If that happens, there's going to be a procedure for what you need to do. Okay. But we really want to make sure that if you can make it on your child's assigned day to please do so. Okay. If you can't make it on your child's assigned day, and it says it right in the letter of the procedure, all you're going to need to do is email my secretary because we have to manage those people that will be coming into the building if they miss their scheduled time. Um, and then we'll be able to assign you a time so that we can manage how many people are going to be coming in and, and working their way through the school. Okay. So that letter is coming out tomorrow. 
around noon. Uh, and this video will be uh, accompanying that letter in case you want to listen to us talk, uh, because sometimes what we'll be able to explain is not necessarily easily uh, written down for you. Okay. So real, real quick, as, as a parent of kids, I mean, I'm anxious about, you know, the end of the school year. As a teacher, I'm very anxious about the end of the school year. And I know with my kids at home and also my students, and I know as a principal and administration, you're anxious. You know, I've already seen the plan. And I gotta say, it's very well thought out. It's very as well planned and as flexible as possible. So parents, you know, we will do our best. I mean, we ultimately want a safe, is number one priority, safe, as convenient as possible, efficient end of the school year with all the materials. Because we know, you know, you parents have a lot going on. You have multiple kids in multiple buildings. You have jobs that, you know, take up most of your day. We know it's very hard. So please bear with us. We, we do understand. So we honestly want to do what's best for everybody involved. So please watch the video and understand, you know, we will do anything we can to be as flexible to get the job done. So uh, please pay attention to this video. Like I said, with that being said, and I appreciate you saying that, you know, with that being said, what I would also like, you know, people to, to help us with here is if you can make it on the day that you've been scheduled, yeah. please do so. Because on the days that we're going to be doing this, we're going to have a lot of staff members there to assist. Yeah. Um, and if, you know, we want to make sure that we have that taken care of for everybody. Okay. So please, if you can make it on the day, please do so. I would also encourage uh, uh, families, you know, I, I want a student to come in and I also like to have a parent come in with them. So I, I want, you know, to me, that's beneficial for a couple of reasons. One, it's going to help the child be able to move through the building and carry the things they need to carry because they're going to have to take their books to a certain location or have to clean out their locker, you know, all those types of things. So if they have a parent with them, that would be, that would be awesome. Okay. Um, I would also encourage kids to bring some sort of bag with them, you know, like a book bag or whatever, to make sure that whatever belongings from their either their homeroom assigned locker or their gym locker, they'll be able to take home with them. So yeah. me, as we're going through this, I really would like for kids to bring up one parent, not the whole family, one parent, okay, and a bag to take things home so they have, that, okay. All right. And we have over 675 students and so we need to manage. So if you could make it on your day, that would be ideal. Again, we have 675 students to try to appease here and keep safe. So please keep that in mind. Right. All right. Do, there's a process. Okay. So if you want to pull up that letter. Absolutely. Uh, what I want to be able to do as he's doing that is just kind of walk people through. I'm not going to read this letter to you. To me, it's pretty straightforward. Okay. The letter is going to go ahead and just describe to you what the purpose of that day is going to be. Um, but if Mr. Garcia, if you would, if you could just kind of scroll down to the schedule right now. Absolutely. I had to figure out a way to, you know, kind of put kids in a situation where we could get them into the building. So basically, here's our, here's our schedule. We've broken it up by homeroom. Okay, so you can see right now on the sheet that from eight to nine on Thursday, June 4th, Mrs. Brennan's homeroom is going to, to be going through and, and getting their materials and so forth. So let me explain to you because a lot of people go, oh my word, all the lockers are right next to each other and they're, you know, how are you gonna, pro okay. So let me explain to you how that goes and it's written in the letter, okay. Uh, if you are scheduled for Mrs. Brennan from eight to nine, then those are the only people that we will be permitting into the building are those students that are in Mrs. Brennan's homeroom from eight to nine on June the 4th. If you come in for a, di a different time, you'll not be permitted. In. And by the way, everybody that comes into the building has to be wearing a mask as well. So you have to bring your own mask. I'm sure everybody has those. We all had to use them when we've gone out into the out to the world here recently. Um, so you need to have a mask. If you don't have a mask, you're not coming in. If you try to come in at the wrong time, you're not coming in. So everybody has to kind of adhere to that. All right, so, you know, I would say around 7.50, if people want to start arriving, they're going to enter the auditorium doors. We're going to have seats that are going to have tape on the back of the seats that will spread people out throughout the auditorium. Once we, we start to get, you know, some people coming in, then what we're going to begin doing is Dr. Koch will be checking people in at the door. We'll have some staff members in the auditorium. I'll be with the homeroom teacher. Basically, we're going to start moving three or four kids with their parents with them, with the parent with them. They'll go to their locker. The homeroom teacher knows who they are, so they can spread them out. They're going to, we're going to give them a bag 
a garbage bag to you know be able to throw all their stuff away. We're also going to give them a slip of paper which tells them how they need to move when they leave the auditorium. So it'll all be right there. They're going to exit the auditorium uh, through the route that we provide them. They're going to go to their homeroom. They're going to go ahead and start cleaning out their lockers. They're going to have their books available that they have to return. If they took art during the third marking period, they can pick up their art portfolios in homeroom. Mr. Kirkus has, has been working on that, making sure all those art portfolios are, are in their homeroom classes. Once their locker is clean, they have their books and they have all the materials from their locker. Their locker will be open. And by the way, what we've done is Mr. Doherty has gone around our custodian and he has opened up the doors. They're not wide open, but they're open that way because kids may forget their combination or whatever that looks like. Okay, so they're cracked open a little bit so no one has to worry about remembering combinations. They simply go to their locker, they can open up and get their stuff out. They'll walk down a hallway to a stairwell. By the stairwell will be some large bins where they can throw their garbage bag full of trash. They go downstairs. They walk to the cafeteria and in the cafeteria will be some staff members and we'll have in the cafeteria sections for subject areas. So math will be over here, English will be over here, social will be there, world language will be here, science will be over here. Teachers names will be put on the wall and the periods will be put on the floor. They okay, taped on the floor and so all students are going to need to do is just place their books in the subject area with their teacher and the period that they're in. They place their books there, and once all their books are returned, at that particular point in time, they're going to exit that uh, cafeteria and start making their way down to the gym locker room, whether they're going to the, uh, the girls' locker room upstairs or the boys' locker room <coughs> down on the, on the first floor. If they have to go to the girls' locker room, they're going to walk up that one stairwell, okay, uh, stairwell number four. Once again, that will all be written down. They will walk upstairs uh, and they will enter the girls locker room through the auxiliary gym and then exit out the door into the hallway and then go back downstairs into the gym. Boys that go into the boys locker room will uh, walk down and enter the boys locker room, not from the gym, but from the hallway door. That door will be propped open. There'll be teachers, phys ed teachers in each of the locker rooms. Once again, those locks, you know, combination locks will be all open and they'll still have the lock on the locker. Okay, the kids then will be responsible for taking the lock off, getting their stuff out of their uh, gym locker, taking the lock over, putting it in a box, and they can walk out into the gym. In the gym, they will have the opportunity if they purchase a yearbook and yearbooks are supposed to be delivered this week, hopefully that will happen. If they have pre ordered and purchased a yearbook, Okay, that will be a uh, table will be set up where they can walk over to the gym and pick up their yearbook. Uh, also, the school nurse will be there. She'll have a table as well. Anybody that stored medication uh, with her during the course of the year can pick that up. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. If you, if you don't have either of those things happening, walk through the gym and out the gym lobby doors, out into the parking lot, and then make your way to wherever you had parked your car. Okay, so for me, <clears throat> what we want to try to do is keep people moving throughout the building so that people aren't around one another. Once we get started, okay, as soon as one person leaves that group, uh, that first group of kids that was at the homeroom, I'll be making a radio call, send an X, send an X. So we're just going to have that constant rotation throughout the building. Okay, that's why it's going to be real important that pe you know, people aren't stopping and talking and hanging out. We have a job to do. We got to make sure we get through that you know, different, you know, drop-off points and that we, we have throughout the building, okay? We've walked through it a couple times, okay? We feel pretty comfortable about the fact that if people do what we're asking to do, we'll be able to spread people out and it'll be a safe environment, okay? But ultimately, just to summarize, they report to the auditorium, mm -hmm. the auditorium entrance, which is front of the building, when you face the building, the right side. <clears throat> And they enter, they check in with one of the principals, assumedly Dr. Koch. That's correct. And they go to a certain seating area. There will be seats that are blocked off to maintain oh. social distancing. We'll just put tape, we're going to put tape on the back of seats where people can sit. So they'll know that that's the seat that they can sit in. Yep. Good. And then each home, or for each homeroom, and then a few kids at a time, very few, will then start to make their way up to their homeroom. Lockers will be ready and opened. They remove their stuff. They have to bring a bag so they can carry their stuff out. 
also they have to clean them out completely. They, there is a place to dispose of their trash on the way out. And then they come down to the cafeteria, drop off any books or obligations they have, go to the gym locker rooms, take care of that, and they're out. Is that pretty much ultimately what we're looking at then? That's, that's pretty much what it looks like. Uh, the one thing I do want to say is, you know, we're, we're not going to have a teacher that's going to be sitting there that's going to be checking off whether, you know, Johnny or Sally turned their books in, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, what we'll be doing, though, is that will be checked, obviously, at a later point in time, uh, you know, and if people haven't brought their books in, that becomes an obligation. So we want to make sure that you bring your books, all your books in with you that you have at home, and then whatever you have in your locker, okay? So all lockers... Yes, they're going to be unlocked. Like I said, we just didn't want to be dealing with and slowing down the process of kids having to memorize their combination. They haven't used it for two months, so they probably will have forgotten. Yeah. So they're, they're, they are popped open, but they are not open, if you know what I mean. Sounds like a very like efficient plan, which maximizes movement, maximizes keeping distance between people, and effectively gets the job done. It sounds like a really good plan knowing the layout of the building. Sounds safe. Right. If you could uh, go to that next letter, please, I'd appreciate that, the medication letter. Would you like me to scroll out on the rest of the schedule first, or? Uh, no, that's good. I mean, they'll see the okay. letter when, when it, yep, there okay. you go. Okay, so there's all schedule. You'll get that letter when we send it. Okay, so the nurse's letter, here we go. Can you see that, Dr. Seconds? I can see it, yep. Okay. Bas basically, what happens is this, is students, if they happen, for whatever reason, we can't get a, you can't have a parent come with them for whatever reason, okay, that, that may happen too. Uh, and a student can only pick up medication if it's just an EpiPen or an inhaler, if they fill out the form that's at the bottom of this sheet. So if you could scroll down, Mr. Parsons. Absolutely. Parsley. So if your child has an EpiPen or an inhaler that has been stored in the uh, nurse's office with Mrs. Bradfield, okay, you need to print this out, you need to fill this out, and if you're not going with your kid and they're just coming into the building to do this by themselves, okay, then you're going to need to fill that out and give it to her, okay, and when, when they go down to the nurse's table, they will hand her the note, it's signed by a parent, and then she will provide them with a, the, either their EpiPen or inhaler. If we don't have the note, she's not in this form, she's not gonna give it to them, okay? In addition to that, uh, no student can pick up any other type of medication. Like any other type of medication that Mrs. Bradfield was, you know, administering and holding for the students throughout the course of the year, students are not gonna be permitted to pick that up. And that's all outlined in that, uh, you know, if you will, information page that you'll see right here. All that's right there, okay? Uh, the adult, the parent needs to do that, or the, or if the parent can't be there and there are the aunts coming in to bring to, to come in with the kid, okay, then then the parent needs to contact Mrs. Bradfield. She's going to have to verify who that person is based upon the email and check IDs and so forth. Okay, so because some kids have some some different type of medication that's you know pretty important. So matter of safety, absolutely. That's that's all that it boils down to. Okay. Yep. All right. Good. So, Mr. Parsi, I think I think you know we'll we'll see how this goes. When you when you look at the schedule, you know we you know it's like we did seven hours a day. That's seven homerooms a day. That's we were able to do uh, on Monday or excuse me Thursday, Friday, Monday, and then half of Tuesday. Okay. So the the time that we're going to be doing makeups, if you will, if you can't make it on your assigned time will be, you're gonna have, we'll have to schedule it for you when you can come in, but that would be Tuesday afternoon and Wednesday. Those will be the days that we'll be trying to work that out, where if you can't make it because of a conflict, please don't panic, okay? Please, please don't panic. We got time for you, we'll just email, it says on the sheet, Mrs. Evans, and she'll schedule the time Tuesday afternoon or Wednesday, okay? And like I said at the beginning of the video, again, we miss being with the kids every day. You know, it's a very unfortunate situation. Many of the students and, and a lot of the staff and the all Springford has really made the best out of this bleak situation. And and we still we want what's in the best interest of your of your child. OK, and, and we feel that this plan is very well thought out. It's very safe, most importantly, and it's very efficient. So we really ask that you do your best to 
follow this schedule. If you can make it that day, that, that would be very important. We'd also ask if someone from your household, like parent could come in just to help your child. Also too, if there's a med medication issue, you know, to make it safe, we need your support. And also too, we're going to be flexible if there's an extreme situation, if you couldn't make it that day. So, you know, I, I looking at this plan, I really, I really feel confident once again, we're making the best out of a not optimal situation. And I think that's a, you know, I think we learn a lot from the situation. I, I just think, you know, we always tell our students, you know, make the best of a situation. You need to adapt to a challenge. You know, I, I think this whole community is really adapted to this significant challenge. And I think uh, we just ask that you continue just two more weeks and with your grades and with this checkout policy. I mean, it, it, it's, been, it's been a tremendous experience. I mean, we've made the best out of a tough situation. That's a good life lesson. I just want to make sure, too, that everybody remembers, and I, I once again, Mr. Parsi, I appreciate what you're saying right now, uh, and I agree wholeheartedly. We just got to make sure everybody's wearing a mask, right? Yep. Everybody has to have those when they come in. That, that includes all the employees that at the time will be wearing masks as well. We got to make sure that we, we do that, okay? And, and again, right. and let me just say this real quick, they will not be allowed in the building if they don't have a mask. Correct. Absolutely not, because that doesn't, I mean, talk about safety. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. And and I think we're good. I, I think that if we just, you know, if you if you read the letter and you got some questions, I think it's pretty thorough. It just explains to everybody. We'll guide you through it. All you need to do is, you know, on your home day, just do your best to be there at that time, right? Get people in. And once we get it going, then I think it should be, we should be able to move through it fairly quickly. If you can't make it, don't panic. If we can bring a pair, bring a pair. If you got, you can need a mask to come in. If you try to come in at a time that's not your time, you're not going to be permitted in. Yeah. We, we have to manage what it is, and that's unfortunately how it goes, okay? And we will work with you, believe me. We're, we're all going to work together here, okay? We all want to so get the job do, done. Yeah, we got to get it done. That's that's unfortunately how it goes. And like, like you said, it has been truly unfortunate, but yeah. we've tried our best to make the best out of a, of a really bad situation. Absolutely. Okay. And, and when you do show up and if you're nervous, where do I go first? You know, go to the auditorium. And we'll guide you through it. We'll guide you through it. You know, don't stress. Where do I go first? Relax. We, I promise you, I, I've been in this building for 18 years now. It's planned out well. It'll work out just fine. Just bring a bag to help you keep care of the stuff and come to the auditorium. We'll take it from there and everything will work out just fine. And we thank you so much for your support and patience through this unfortunate situation. Anything? Are we good? That's it? I think so. Yes, sir. All right. Well, once again, we thank you guys for watching uh, SIGS on on the eighth grade center on the man network where as always, and what we'll, always will be all academic all the time. Thank you, Dr. Siggins. It was good seeing you again. And uh, we hope you all are doing well. Thank you and have a good day.